So it's unique. It's probably never going to happen again on my channel. We're going to show you how to prepare a beaver tail. Now, many of you realize that I am a social studies teacher here in Ohio. I teach three sections of eighth grade and one section of seventh grade. Eighth grade is U.S. history here in Ohio and seventh grade is world history. If you didn't know, or maybe you didn't pay attention to your history class, but the fur trade was actually a very important part to our early American economy because over in Europe, they did have beaver, but they were pretty much hunted to endangerment or extinction. So when people came here, traded with the Native Americans, you know, not just beaver, but all sorts of different furs and got sent back to Europe, it was booming, right? Like there were so many animals here, it was actually a fairly easy way to make a living. At the beginning of the year, I went to my treasurer because I mean, some of the schools, they give you a little bit of money to use for your classroom for educational purposes, you know, posters or manipulatives or, or whatever. And I went to my treasurer and I said, hey, I'd really like to get this beaver pelt online. I think it was like 100 or $150 for like a small one because they, they get pretty big, right? And they get more expensive and they have different grades or qualities. I was declined, I was really, really disappointed. So what do you do? You know, do you walk away? No, I made a special presentation for my treasure with all these uh, articles and, and journal entries and everything about the importance of the fur trade here in early America. And he didn't care. He didn't even respond. So anyhow, I was provided a beaver. And when you're given lemons, you make lemonade. And this is really cool too. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, fillet this, basically. I'm going to keep the fat because uh, Horace Kephart, in the early 20th century in his book, Woodcraft, he actually explained how to prepare beaver. It's really basic. All you do is you get your fire going, you get your coals, take your beaver tail, you throw it in the coals, and when it starts crackling, you turn it over and crackling again, and it's, it's ready to eat. You know, it's done, right? This is a delicacy in Canada and other parts of the world. And even though I am going to keep the leather, right, I'm actually going to use the leather as a... Uh, as a top or a cover for my Kephart knife as an homage to, to Horace Kephart in his book. And as you can see, it's about the right size for a knife sheath. Now there's not gonna be much meat to this because this beaver is actually fairly small. They get really, really big. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to move the camera here in a moment and I'm going to use this fillet knife. Now, I don't know what happened to my good fillet knife. Yeah, might have been left at camp. Maybe it's in a, a troop trailer somewhere or something. I don't remember. Don't know what happened. But anyhow, at my big box store, Walmart, I found this Ozark Trail six inch fillet knife for like four bucks. And I was like, man, for four bucks, even if I just use it once and it works, that's a pretty sweet deal. And uh, it comes with a pretty nice little sheath. And I like the holes so it can drain out. It doesn't uh, you know, hold the water residue. And as I run my thumb across it, it certainly feels razor sharp. I think we'll be just fine with this. Like I said, even if you just use it once and it's good for four bucks, you can't really go wrong. Am I right? All right, let's move the camera and I'll show you what we're going to do. You have your tail here. Now, I'm not going to worry about the fur for right now. I'm actually going to cut that off after it's all said and done. We're going to go through the center here where the tailbone is and uh, then we're going to come around to the side and go one side at a time. This is something you want to take your time with. You don't want to rush. You especially don't want to pierce the most precious thing, which is the, the skin that we're going for. Remember, fillet knives are extremely sharp. You can kind of see the blade come through right there. As we peel back, we can see all that fat. This uh, $4 knife 
is working wonderfully. All right, all right, nice. Again, I'm following this, uh, the blade here, and I'm looking for that hump. Just knowing basically where the tip of my knife is. If you fillet a fish, then this should come pretty much a second nature. Trying to keep it center of the skin there. Okay, so now that we've got that, we got this. Switch my hand. Now we've got that fat there. I'm going to angle my knife just slightly up as I come through because uh, it will hit that skin and it'll take off most of the fat with it. And just every once in a while, take a look and double check. Oops, knife poked through right there. There we go. One side completely done. Now for the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. My friend, if you like this video, if you're into historic campcraft or just outdoor adventure, bushcraft, and camping in general, then I'd like to invite you to Traditional Camp Crafters Guild. This is a paid community for people who really enjoy camping and outdoor adventure. Right? And uh, what's beautiful about it is it has exclusive content in there and it, it's especially really good if you're trying to find like-minded people. It is a, a place where you can come and collaborate with others and network with others. It's a professional group. And as things get going, and already we've got a couple special events already on the calendar, but as things get going, we're going to have a special get-togethers and meetups and things like that. Now, uh, I, nothing else, check it out for five free days. The link is in the description box below. There's no risk. It doesn't even require your credit card to just check it out. Play around with the different tools and see if it's a good place for you. If you like camping, I can pretty much guarantee that it's the place for you and you'll really enjoy it. So again, the description box below, you can find the link and I can't wait to see you on there and welcome me aboard. Find the center there. Just get it started. Okay. 
looks like on this side I jumbled it up a little bit. So what I did, and since I messed this up here, I went actually behind it and then came up this way just a little bit so I could try to fix that. All right, so there's our second one. Now this, we're gonna wash off I'm gonna fry it up, I hear it's delicacy. Some people actually take this meat here and uh, they'll actually ferment it. And it's really good for fish bait and animal bait, but I'm going to eat it. So there we have it. We can try to skin that very carefully and then we'll put in some borax to dry it out. And then we'll use some egg to, uh, to make leather out of it. Got some nice leather here and it really, really is a thin, thin leather by itself. It's not gonna be very good for a nice sheath. A lot of people will actually turn these into wallets. Uh, people will turn them into shoes. But uh, for our purposes, this is gonna cover my Kephart knife. I'm really excited. Another good thing that came from this video is, well, kind of a review for this really cheap, but really nice and useful Walmart filet knife. And this uh, worked out exactly for what I wanted. One thing I do really like about this versus my other knife that has a wood handle, uh, this one has that kind of a plastic grip and I, I like that a lot better than the wood handle because I feel like I can actually hold it. The shape of it's really good too. So there you go. If you need a, a cheap fillet knife, go pick this one up for four bucks at Walmart. Ozark Trail. So, it's nice. All right, man, that is the video on how to fillet a beaver tail. This is the first beaver tail I've ever filleted and for the first time, not knowing the nuances and everything, I think I did okay. There's a little bit of damage to both tails, the one a little bit more worse than the other, but I, I think I'll still be able to save this and use this for my Kephart sheath, and it's gonna look fantastic. I'm really excited about it, and I get to try myself a little bit of uh, a delicacy with a beaver tail. If you've ever had beaver, let me know what you think about it below. A lot of people will take this and they'll use it for fish bait or animal bait or something like that. We're going to fry it up and eat it and I'll let you know how that tastes in the next video. Now again, I'd really like to invite you to join us at the Traditional Camp Crafters Guild if you haven't done so already. It's a growing community, it's vibrant, it's full of stuff like this and more. And it's just going to keep getting bigger and better. So at least check it out and uh, if you have any suggestions or something, then leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear you guys. Uh, if you're interested in some videos about knives, I have a whole playlist about knives over here, historic knives and how to use them. And if you're interested in uh, more of a traditional camp craft thing, then check this out here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.